Conor McGregor does not get enough credit for his role in single-handedly orchestrating the biggest rivalry in the history of mixed martial arts. So now you wonder am I speaking about his legendary pair of showdowns with Nate Diaz back in 2016, and the tense but unquestionably interesting dynamic that still exists between them to this day? Or am I referring to his truly ugly relationship with Khabib Nurmagomedov, a pairing that led to the biggest selling fight in UFC history? Well what if I told you I wasn't speaking about either one? What exactly makes a great sporting rivalry, and specifically, what are the characteristics of a devoted set of opposing fan bases? Barcelona Real Madrid? The Boston Celtics and the LA Lakers, the Red Sox and the Yankees. There is true animosity to be found within these great and long-lasting rivalries. Logic can be thrown out the window and information can be ignored when it suits. Allowances are made and all in all you will defend your side even if you don't have a leg to stand on. This in essence is what makes a rivalry. MMA's most divisive figure splits people down the middle in a manner that no one has ever come close to replicating. I'll use the terms as they've been thrown out there. The Conor McGregor hater, the Conor McGregor fanboy. Two sets of extremely stubborn supporters, unwilling to give an inch and just as emotionally invested as the other, whether they're ready to admit it or not. This is MMA's single greatest rivalry, its single greatest divide. And if you think that Conor McGregor is not aware of this and more, you are kidding yourself. The man's name cannot stay out of the headlines. For the last four or five years, whether you love him or hate him, the constant stream of scandals, social media posts and verbal barbs has reeled you in, and in your obsessive love or your obsessive hatred, you've served the purpose of keeping this fire burning. I'm going to dive into McGregor's recent retirement announcement, uh, what I think is happening here, and attempt to shed a little light on how this man's mastery of the media and fan manipulation is something to be marvelled at. Now before we begin of course, you're probably hearing the Irish accent and assuming that this is going to be a bias laden puff piece that will serve as nothing more than ear candy for the diehard McGregor supporters within your number. And yes, as an Irishman, Connor has had a profound effect on my life as an MMA fan, as a sports fan. But let me be clear, as a professional first and foremost, I have found that the most interesting place to position myself when it comes to Connor McGregor is somewhere in the middle. Understanding McGregor is in some ways a key to understanding the sport in this its modern era. And we're not talking about fighting at all here, that's another video for another time. The MMA retirement is a bit of a funny concept, given exactly how loose the term has become over the years, but even now, with Connor currently in the middle of his third clean break from the sport, a lot of people still do not see what is really happening. At the beginning of 2020, the seemingly reinvigorated Conor McGregor set out his plans for a year-long season, one that would help him put the memories of a one-side beatdown at the hands of Khabib Nurmagomedov to bed, one that also would, if all went well, culminate in a rematch with that very man, a fight that would no doubt once again be the biggest fight in UFC history. And at UFC 246, with that quick, clean and completely dominant first round TKO victory over Donald Cerrone, Conor was at the very least back in the win column. He himself had done a lot of damage to his reputation in the time since his 2016 double champ moment against Eddie Alvarez in New York City's Madison Square Garden. Some of that damage will never be undone. A lot of fans jumped ship after seeing this agitated, aggressive and maybe even inebriated version of the former champion, as he crossed line after line with what was an increasingly difficult to watch rivalry with the more stoic Khabib Nurmagomedov. Those who hated him rejoiced at what appeared to be a very public fall from grace. Those who loved him could barely recognize the man who stood before them. All of a sudden, in some people's eyes, history was revised, and the great Conor McGregor was just another fighter who had finally met his match. But the McGregor who returned after a year off to face Cowboy wasn't that man, let's be real. He cut a more self-aware figure, and while, of course, Trusting a celebrity as media savvy as McGregor is always a risky game to play. As I listened to him speak, I could see development, I could see some human growth and an understanding in his eyes that he had some work to do to get back to where he was. I thought picking a fight with Cerrone was perfect, and I believe that Connor learned from the recklessness that defined his earlier days in the UFC. The anybody, any time, any place mentality that caused him to take the fights with Chad Mendes and Nate Diaz. I find it so interesting to watch how people are ready to completely write off the chances of an athlete who has already proven himself to be capable of undeniable greatness. I'm not saying that he's going to beat Khabib, but I'm not stupid enough to rule anything out. He's standing at the foot of a mountain and a half, 
make no mistake. But to disregard this man's ability to get himself back on course is to make the same mistake that always ends up defining this part in the story. Tiger Woods had a far greater fall than Conor McGregor, where career-threatening injuries, reputation-destroying scandals, and advancing age caused practically everyone to rule him out from ever winning a major championship again. And yet, this great athlete, who has touched the highest of highs in the past, managed to find that greatness within himself after a time of unthinkable lows. And we all know what happened next. He won the Masters in 2019. They called it the greatest sporting comeback of all time. Those who had written him off were forced to confront what was a very important lesson about sports, about why we actually watch sports. From where I'm standing, to discount Conor McGregor at this point is nothing short of madness. I'm not saying that I favor him to pull it off. Of course not. It's a huge mountain to climb. Khabib Nurmagomedov is literally the most perfect nightmare matchup one could ever imagine dreaming up for Conor McGregor at 155 pounds. And yet, I have seen this man touch greatness. I've seen him wreck a decade-long legacy in 13 seconds. I've seen him turn an entire sport on its head. I've seen him leave one of the greatest career lightweights of all time looking like he had no business being inside the cage with him. Are you ready to ride him off completely? And if you are, what exactly do you think that you know that sets you apart? Sports are a funny, funny game where the unthinkable narratives write themselves at the most unlikely of times and one fight can literally change everything in an instance. Look at the seemingly finished Cody Garbrandt. Three knockout losses in a row and a massive hole in his game and fight IQ exposed. Ten minutes later, he's the talk of the Bantamweight division and one of the slickest, fastest and most deadly knockout artists in the game. Cody Garbrandt is a special fighter who has touched greatness in the past. We are undoubtedly at the most pivotal point in the story of Conor McGregor. Will he fail as he failed before? Where his life of excess, his lapses in focus and his stylistic shortcomings will end up being what defines him? Or will he find a way to be the man that his fans believe him to be? I do hear fans often talking about people being unfairly critical of Conor, but for me, that is the high stakes game that he is elected to play. Conor's entire persona is built around the notion that he is the greatest fighter of all time. And your opinion on that claim will shape the criticisms that you have for him. That is his choice, and it's part of the reason he's so popular. But he has not done that. If GOAT status was the goal, he has fallen short by quite some distance so far in his career. Whether it's the holes in his game or simply the pressures that come with being Conor McGregor, up until this point, he has not reached his goal. I'm not ready to rule him out because I can see the narrative forming already. One major win in his next fight would change everything, whether it's against Justin Gaethje or Jorge Masvidal, whoever. From my experience, MMA fans can be quite short-sighted sometimes. And while his retirement shtick is undoubtedly working a charm, there is still so much for Connor to gain from this game. So what is he up to right now? Well, of course his plan for a three-fight season was derailed by the ongoing global pandemic that came as a result of COVID-19. So with him stuck in Ireland, with his opportunities limited, what were his options? Well, he could sit back and wait, allow things to develop and see how the world of fighting will be affected by this truly unique global circumstance. In that time, he could keep an active social media presence, heckle other fighters and basically do the Conor McGregor thing. The other option is to attempt to fight behind closed doors like so many others have. It wouldn't be ideal. But with no real end in sight for this crowdless version of mixed martial arts, eventually he would have to make this move. So why retire? What is it that has changed since his decision to make this year a season in an attempt to slowly earn back what he had lost in the most dramatic of fashions? If you're asking me, and I'm basing my opinion on what I know of Connor, what I know of the fans, and what I know of how the media works, he'll fight again before the year is out. He just doesn't seem ready to do it now. Maybe he's having difficulties lining up an opponent. Maybe he's having problems with the UFC at the negotiation table. Maybe he's injured, I don't know. But if you look back on Connor's history, he always causes a major splash and throws the fans completely off the trail to drum up interest ahead of his next bout. This is what he does every time in the lead up to a fight announcement. And yet a lot of people just don't notice. Like I said before, he's at a pivotal point in his career where his next move needs to be a very careful one. I believe that age and wisdom have shown him that he needs to take a more delicate step. As much as some of you would like to believe otherwise, it would make zero sense to walk away from the sport now. Sure, this could be genuine, but this is not how McGregor's actual retirement from the sport will look. Are you kidding me? 
the most exuberant man to ever lace up gloves and fight inside an octagon, reduced to a tweet and some half-assed comments in the media. The same people who believed this believed it when he retired the first time, and they believed it again the second time. Expect a bit of fight-related buzz, some will-they-won't-they they moments in the media, a few vague comments from Dana White, and then bang, a fight announcement and we're back in business. We have been here before. Let's be sure to keep that in mind. If you enjoyed today's content, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all of our latest uploads. And as always, thank you for watching.